Welcome back to New England Living. Up next, we'll show you how to design the ideal kitchen workspace. We're here today talking about some of the big things that people typically overlook when designing a kitchen. You do this all the time, so what's the first step? The first step is finding a kitchen designer and also an interior designer if you choose to work with one so that the pressure's not on you so that you can get the kitchen right, right out of the gate. Take the pressure off, have more fun, I like it. What are some of your tips for selecting a designer? Well, you want to get somebody that's the right personality fit for you. You certainly don't want to get somebody that has different tastes than you. I mean, somebody that understands the styles that you're after. You don't want to hire somebody that is really good at doing traditional kitchens if their niche is very modern and contemporary kitchens. Timing-wise, what are some suggestions you have to make this process go as smoothly as possible? You really need to set realistic goals. Don't torture yourself on trying to do the project too fast. Do all your homework up front, do your planning, and leave yourself enough time to execute the project afterwards. Every kitchen is obviously different. How do proportions factor into the design process? Yeah, so it's real important. This kitchen here, as you can see, is a very large kitchen with tall ceilings. It can accommodate large appliances, but not all kitchens have that. So it's real nice to know the ceiling heights. You don't want to put large hoods or tall hoods into a kitchen with low ceilings or refrigerators that are just overpowering. It needs to be in proportion to your room. What are some things that people typically overlook when it comes to the proportion of the kitchen? A big mistake that we see happen is in small kitchens, clients come to us with a beautiful island that just isn't going to fit. Sure, it'll fit in a room, but there'll be no walk space around it, no way to prepare food, people will be bumping into each other. So it's real important that you set your expectations based on your kitchen, your floor plan, whether it's an island or the hood that you're doing, fits that room. We've all heard the phrase, too many cooks in a kitchen. How does this kitchen let multiple people work cohesively together. Yeah, so that's that's really important in designing your kitchen. You'll notice we have a galley workstation. The galley workstation has really reinvented the kitchen. The galley is amazing because it has multiple layers and you're able to work on different surfaces and it creates more counter space. You can have two people prepping food, you can be doing multiple things at the same time. You're able to serve a meal out of the galley. It has changed the way a kitchen is designed. The galley workstation can be configured any way you want. It doesn't have to be a big workstation like this in a very large island. You can do a smaller workstation and put induction burners on either end. So you're literally cooking right on this same surface that the workstation is. You can boil water and dump it out through the strainer. The kitchen becomes very linear with that type of design. You don't need to have a large kitchen for a galley workstation. They're actually wonderful to have in a small kitchen. The perception is the magic happens at five feet. Well, guess what? It really starts at three feet because you're gaining more counter space. That small kitchen where you need counter space, the galley is awesome because you have multiple levels and it really expands your cooking surface and preparation surface. So it can serve a function in all the different stages of cooking from prepping to entertaining. Absolutely. From beginning to end, everything happens around the galley workstation. Functionality-wise, what are some of the tools that this offers to make entertaining and the cooking process easier? Yeah, so the galley comes with an assortment of tools depending on the size of the workstation. There's spots to put your knives, your strainers. There's a whole series of devices that you can put into the galley workstation for serving food out of. It's not just preparing food. How important is it to select your appliances early on in the design process? It's vital. You don't want to design a kitchen and then choose your appliances and find out you have the wrong appliances or the wrong design for those appliances. We've had clients who have designed the kitchen in their mind, put it on paper, and then they met the galley workstation. They decided they want to knock walls down and reinvent their kitchen in a whole different way to accommodate the galley workstation. This is where you're entertaining. This is where you're spending time with your family. Everything happens around the galley workstation. Designing a kitchen can be an overwhelming process. There are so many choices to be made, but it doesn't have to be, right? No, it doesn't have to be. It's your kitchen. You want to have fun with it. Design it the way you want it to be. Follow the lead of the people that you're working with, but in the end, they're your decisions. You're the one living in the kitchen after everybody's gone home. So. Have fun with it, don't sweat the small details, and enjoy the process.